All right, my friends, welcome back to another episode of the Rice and Grow Build. That's right, we're building this house start to finish for you guys. This is part two of our framing videos. And as you can see, on the last video, we left off where we just had set the floor trusses. And today we're decking. We're gonna be framing by probably the end of the day today, our second floor walls. This is Wednesday at 11.15. So basically day three of framing. And the crew has been killing it. The Reisinger build in partnership with our friends at Builders First Source. Let's get going. A build original series in partnership with Builders First Source. The Reisinger build. Okay, y'all. Here's the scoop. This product is really a premium subfloor product. And for me, I don't want to mess around when it comes to subfloors and squeaks. So I like to use the best, even if I'm saving a few dollars, let's say, by, by using a girder truss instead of steel. This is inch and an eighth Advantech. If you're not familiar with Advantech, it is a advanced subfloor product that's very moisture resistant. I don't have, I've not, never had a single swelling issue uh, with Advantech, even though I've had swelling with plywood before, and that's why I made the switch in 2006. We're using their glue that comes in a can, and this glue is a polyurethane glue that goes on like a foam and falls to a gel. And you're gonna see here in a second, it's just gonna kind of fall down. <laughs> the guys actually went pretty heavy on the glue. We probably could have gone a little less heavy than that. Uh, but you're gonna see when that panel drops down, it's gonna drop into that glue and it's gonna make a tenacious bond between the Advantech and the glue. And now we're, we're not gonna have any issues with squeaks on this house. And we're only gonna nail it, by the way. We don't need to screw it. When we nail this together uh, with that glue, th really the nails in some respects are, are a clamp action and the glue is what's really doing the holding power. You're actually gonna destroy the panel uh, to get it off when you glue it like that. So this, this is a really bomber assembly. A couple things I wanna mention about trusses too. We kind of talked about this briefly in the last episode, but look how flat the subfloor is. These trusses that are engineered, uh, there's no crowning. There's no, uh, you know, looking down at lumber and trying to decide which way the crown goes up. It's perfectly flat from the factory. These are 20 inch deep trusses and you can see these nice open webs. We've got lots of space on these webs to run all our mechanicals. It's just a really nice floor assembly. And you saw on the last episode, we did a lot of pre-planning trying to figure out from my mechanical closet, which is going to be over here, how do we run all the ducts through? And now you can see those big open spaces on these 20 inch deep floor trusses. So let's let the guys get this decking down and uh, we'll pick it back up here in a little bit. Okay, y'all, if you don't know him, the famous Bill Wood of Madera Framing. This is Bill's guys framing. Bill and I have worked together for 15 years now. I think so, Roughly. Yeah. We've done a lot of houses together, but this is our second house doing ready frame. That's right. Uh, I'm curious from your perspective, Bill, the old salty framer <laughs> that I suspect a lot of viewers can uh, relate to you and me being the old guys in the room. Oh my God. Uh, let's talk about what you like about it. What are the downsides or things you don't like about it? Ready frame in particular, that is. Uh, and what would you do better or differently in our next ready frame job? Okay. Well, like you said, it's our second one. Yep. Um, you know, I got to admit, I was a little salty on the first one for sure. <laughs> but this this time around, you know, we don't often get to build this type of house. Yep. A lot of time we're building really big customs. And yeah. Or crazy old, houses. Yeah, yeah, or remodels or whatever. Not that it wouldn't work for that, but um, it's really cut down our time it's kind of a breath of fresh air it in some is respects, you know it? like it, you think about pulling your tape out for every sill every yeah. cripple yeah. every header yeah uh yellow measurements back and forth yeah. somebody out there cutting you yeah. know you've got to have a guy cutting that all day long that's right and so that's in essence, you don't have any guy as the cut guy on this job no that's pretty cool no. i've got all men up top one guy down below for our second story <laughs> handing material. material yeah, yeah. It's worked out good. Um, I will say, you know, we had a couple, like you mentioned, a couple of hiccups on yep. our foundation, yep. but we were able to recover from that pretty easily. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you were on when I talked about this, Bill, but this is not panelized construction that no. we're just like, 
hey guys, craning these big panels no. and try and make them fit. We're still framing a house here. We're framing a house. We actually get to call our lumber. Yeah, that's you right. Know, oh, all that's the, a great point. All the studs come out in a bundle yep. like you would on any house. Yeah. And we're calling through those. Yeah. Uh, we don't get to call through our plates and our sills, but sills are short usually. Yeah. And if it's something that's really bad, then we'll we we'll can recut it one. if we need to. Yeah, exactly. Which I don't think we've had to do yet, right? No, we haven't. They seem to have done a pretty good job yeah. of culling ahead of time. They did. They yeah. did. Um, I do like it. Uh, the markings are real easy to understand mm -hmm. once we kind of, you know, started to get what they were doing and yep. how they were yep. how they marked them out. Uh, all that's real easy to go. And so I've got you know my main guy up there with the set of plans and. And each wall is marked out, and we just drop them in. Yeah. So really, you don't have to cut uh, any headers, any sills, any cripples, any jacks. It's pretty awesome. Any of that stuff, it's all laid out. And like I said, on on a house like this, more of a traditional house, it uh, man, I could see some benefit for sure. I like to point out that it's 10:15. On our fourth day, it's Thursday, day. right? We yeah. started Monday morning first thing, package yeah. drops first thing. We're making great progress. Good progress, and as you have stated, we had to go around and bottom plate everything before. Yeah. So it's right. got a double bottom plate for yeah. another detail that Which you like to do. Took a little longer. Took a little than longer. Than a standard frame job, right. a single bottom right. plate. Yeah. And we had to massage it onto the foundation a bit. But yeah, I mean, day four for us. It's pretty uh, quick. We'll have these walls done here before lunch. Yeah. Trusses are coming tomorrow. Yeah. I'm actually going to start to sheathe, which I like to do. I like to sheathe the first floor before we start rolling trusses, just to sturdy things up. That's smart. Um, yeah, That's I like it. Awesome. Yeah. So here's a question for you. What will we do differently on the next ready frame package? Like on this package, this is the first time they had cut angled uh, cripples for us. Right. So we get that bi five degree bevel. That seems to be working great. I'm it's really great. excited about that. One thing that I think I've heard your guys say, slash one of the ready frame guys, is we sent a uh, eight foot plate for, for the upstairs top plates. Yeah. And I think you guys would prefer to run a 16 foot plate. Yeah, we would. That's really, you know, so we've preference. got sections. I mean, yeah, it's easy. One guy can nail up a, an eight foot section, stand it on his own. Mm -hmm. There's benefit to that. Yeah, that's true. Um, but next we, time we're going to request Ready Frame does the longer, longer plates. Longer I, plate. as a carpenter, I want to weave everything together. Yeah. And so the yeah. more I can do that yep. with less little pieces, the better off we're going to be. That's right. Now we pull all this together. As long as our numbers hit, we'll top plate it. Yeah, that's right. I do want to point out that's a single top plate on the ready frame package, and then you guys are coming in with that second plate. We'll tie everything later. together with 16 foot plate. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like it. Bill, amazing job out here. Your crew rocks. Thank you. I love seeing those uh, Build Logo uh, Madeira. Oh frame yeah, and those, are, those are awesome. That's yeah. a one-off Part you don't, partnership. You don't see that uh, yeah. on the uh, on the merch store, but <laughs> amazing work. Let's let these guys keep going, Bill. Appreciate yeah. it, brother. All right, thank you. All right, let's talk anchoring for a minute. You saw us put these bottom plates down and drill with a little tiny bit with some Tapcon screws. That wasn't our anchoring, that was simply a temporary. My engineer has specified this. This is half inch all thread. This happens to be galvanized all thread. And if you saw my earlier episodes, this particular house is a remodel slab, meaning I capped the slab. I put a slab on top of a slab and then I've got some new areas. So in this part of the foundation, it's really easy to tell. Here's the this little crack right here. That's the joint between the old foundation, which was poured in the 1970s, also a rebar uh, slab on grade. And this topping right here, our five inch slab on top of that is literally right on top. So my engineer to connect the two has told me I need to go nine inches down into this old slab with a 5 8 bit to drill a hole for this rebar, pardon me, for this all thread. So this all thread will actually go down and connect both foundations. This kind of cross section right here. This will go down nine inches into the existing foundation all the way through my new foundation. And then at the top, I'm gonna use a washer, a lock washer and a nut and that will anchor the house down. Now these are gonna be on four foot on center and these are going to get epoxied in with some Simpson Set 3G high strength anchoring adhesive. And that's actually literally going to anchor the house down. So when those crazy winds come, when the storms come, 
this house, which is going to resist the racking, is also going to be anchored down to this concrete foundation. A couple things that you need to know about this. When you drill these holes, we're drilling a 5 8 hole to put the half inch all thread in. There's a lot of concrete dust in that hole. So we're blowing that dust out with this cool tool. This is a Bosch blower, which comes with this really nice attachment. It's got a really thin uh, blower on the top there so we can blow out of that. And then this collar ensures that the guys don't get that dust blown back into their face. However, you gotta use a scrub brush. It looks like a bottle brush to get all that dust out. So they're gonna blow it, they're gonna bottle brush it, and then they're gonna blow it again and then double check that we've gotten all the dust out of there before this epoxy goes on. Now I need to actually have an inspection on this. So Wit, my engineer, is coming out to the house tomorrow. We're trying to get it all prepped so he can check every one of these. And then just for uh, the sake of my builder friends out there, those are on four foot on centers, but you're gonna notice anywhere we got a plate break, I need to go within a foot of a plate break. So I have two holes right here. And then anywhere I've got a corner, I need to have an anchor bolt within a foot of the corner. Now in the new part of the foundation, I could have used the standard J bolt uh, like you see in a lot of new construction, but you know, Bill, my framer and I talked about it and we said, you know what, instead of being real specific about placing those J bolts, it's easier for us to drill an epoxy anyway. So we just went with a thinner, uh, I believe this is an eight inch. So we'll probably get like six inches or five inches of embedment here. And these are epoxied in and this meets my engineer's uh, standards as well. We could also, like we've done a lot in the past, use the Titan HD screws. Those are really cool. I'd use those on my house. So that's another option to drill later without having to go to the expense or the time of epoxy uh, in this threaded bar. Steve, welcome to the job site. Looking good out here. Day four, we're still on lunch break. It's just a hair after one o'clock. So we've been working for 4.5 days and we've gotten this far. No, I'm sorry, 3.5 days. What am I saying? Wait a minute. What am I saying? This is Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and half of Thursday. Yeah, 3.5 days, I said it right. I think what you're really trying to say is how exceptional design work up front <laughs> Yes. really provides yes, expedient framing. <laughs> I love it. I am curious, isn't it crazy to come to your jobs where you've envisioned this in your head and all of a sudden the sticks are in the air? It is, it's one of the most exciting times For sure. to see this come alive. For sure. It always is. Come on it in. Always I'm is. curious from your perspective, Steve. You know, we're utilizing your detail that you came up with a long time ago, which is slab top insulation. Uh, and we have not installed any of our interior walls that are non-load bearing. We've just put our load bearing walls in. Talk to me about why we want to do that. So, you know, that detail, we've used it a lot and a lot of people have used it. One of the things is that I found down in Texas, beyond the building science for a second, people want to use real hardwood floors yeah, or that's right. that, those kinds of finishes and they don't want to click and lock floor potentially. Right. Yep. And so the question was, how do we get there? And you know, the traditional system would have been to put down some sleepers and then put a layer of yes. Advantech, but then you put in this compartmentalized insulation system. And it's really not continuous yep. and continuity is certainly the key. So taking that and evolving that traditional detail and saying, okay, if I wanna get rid of the sleepers, how do I do that? Well, if I put down insulation and I do two layers of Advantech and I cross laminate them, then I can basically do, you know, a 2,600 square foot raft here and float it on top of the insulation. And we have a couple of bearing walls. You know, we've got uh, these center walls, which are bearing trusses yep. uh, for our floor system. But as you can see by all the bracing that's in the way, I mean, this is the laundry room. You can see the snapped lines. We got a lot of walls still to go. So we have a lot of walls to go. And so, you know, I always tell people, you, you talk online and you go to these little, uh, seminars and stuff that people do talks and they say oh that's a thermal break okay something has to be the worst part of the building <laughs> right and if i have to sacrifice you know the wall space that we have here is probably about four square feet i mean it's less than one percent right. Right. right so is that a thermal break yeah it is 
but sure. let's do it so the so, framers can keep moving. Yeah, and it's so minor in the scheme of things. Exactly. Super minor. Exactly. Uh, we should be rolling trusses tomorrow. I take that back. No, Monday. So on day six, we should be rolling trusses on this job. Uh, I forget the exact square footage, Steve. I want to say we're like 3,100 condition plus garage and porch. So we're probably, probably we're probably upper 37, 3,800 square feet of framed square footage. How's this compared to jobs that you've seen that are stick built without ready frame? Yeah, I mean, this is certainly a lot faster. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of the things are figured out. Um, and, you know, it's, it makes it faster here, but it doesn't necessarily make the process faster because somebody had to figure all this out That's right. prior That's to time. here. Yep. But the beauty is, is anytime you can run in parallel with systems, then it's to your advantage because yeah, right. it's the linear part is what kills you. Yeah. And honestly, uh, I'd rather pay your hourly rate to do some pre-planning than have seven guys standing around scratching their heads or going quite slow on the job site. Exactly. So anything we can do to speed up when it comes to construction, but spend that time pre-planning, whether that's the architect, whether that's the mechanical designer, uh, all that pre-planning absolutely pays for itself when we get into construction. And, you know, typically on, on the jobs that are, you know, being familiar with, there's always the one guy that does the layout. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of guys that can do the actual building of the wall, standing it up. Yep. The beauty of this system is the layout's already done. Yeah. So you could put a team over there, you could put a team out back, and you yep. can put a team over there right and just have some modestly knowledgeable guys yep. that understand what the difference between an X and a C is. Yep. And you can get three walls getting framed yep. at the same time. That's right. Steve, appreciate you coming by. It's about time to turn the generator back on. The crew's just coming off of lunch. We gotta get back to framing. Get them fired up. Let's keep going. Holy cow, can you believe how much got done this week? This is day five of framing. It's 4.30, the crew just headed out the door. Man, we got a ton done. What a big week here on the job site. Can you believe it, guys? A ton done. This is five days of framing. Literally, the framing crew just pulled out from the job site. It's about 4.15, and it's been so hot this week. I looked at my phone uh, mid-morning, and it was like 80% humidity today. It was crazy crazy. We all sweated our tail off. And not only that, we unloaded some serious stuff. You saw the trusses got unloaded. Well, the guys already carried the back roof trusses around and those are loaded on the back roof. And then check out these big white pallets you're seeing here. That's our Atlas uh, polyiso foam that we're using on the job. We have three different types of foam. We've got rooftop foam, we've got slab top foam, and then in one area of the house, we're doing some exterior insulation as well. I'm kind of making a two by six northern wall, so stay tuned for that. And then the guys have made some great progress on the zip bar, but I still have basically four pallets of zip bar to go on the job site. Uh, I mean, just a ton of work today. And I sweated through my shirt more than one time today. A couple things I want to point out. Uh, the guys did a great job of getting some safety rails up. Our stairs are going to be coming down here. This will be balcony railing, but for now, uh, that's just our ladder spot, but check out the back family room right there. Truss is all laid up. Uh, I think we might actually get some work done tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, I know that Bill Wood, my framer, wants to finish sheathing around the rest of the house before we start on trusses. So those are just stocked. I think probably Monday is going to be trusses, uh, which would be day six or day set, probably day seven, something like that. Um, but man, ready frame, absolutely killed it. Now, I do want to point out, though, you've got a lot of bracing going on in this house because those walls are not sheathed. So as you walk around the house, a fair amount of bracing going on. We should ask Bill later in the episode, but he's a big fan of sheathing after rather than sheathing before like you see some other carpenters do. Uh, so we'll ask Bill that question. That being said, it's Friday. I'm tired. Let's call it quits for the day, and we'll come back uh, either on Saturday or on Monday and pick up the video. Anytime you've got beams coming out of the house, so this is a uh, this is a garage. I'm not quite as worried about it from garage air sealing purposes, but this is a good detail for you to know about in general. Uh, anytime there's a beam coming out of the house, if it's a single member, we can air seal it. But because this is going to be a double member, you can see here there's a second LVL that's coming in here. 
that second LVL could leak air in between those two mem members. So we ran a bead of uh, Lexel in there. We could use liquid flash. We could use just about anything uh, that will stick nicely to wood. Uh, it's gonna be covered, it's gonna be uh, out of sight, but that'll prevent air leakage where those two beams come together. So we just ran two beads up there together. And now when that second beam come, comes in, it'll sandwich that and get that nice and air sealed. So now that second beam's coming in there and that's gonna make our sandwich right where that caulking was in between there. And that's gonna do a good job of air sealing. You'll see when he nails that together, that's gonna seal up nicely. I bet we'll see a little bit of squeeze out right there as well in that corner. There we go, boom. Okay, y'all, another beam from the inside of the out here. And you can see we've got a couple beams of Lexel on there where those two are poking through the wall. And this is actually a triple ply, so we got one more ply to go after this. And we're gonna have one more bead of Lexel on the front face, you can see. And once that gets nailed together, that's gonna air seal it in that bottom section you're seeing right there where those things come together. So make sure that we don't have airflow through there. Hey, Tim, you up here? Yeah. There you are. All the way from Washington State. I uh, like, like how you're, you're needing a little uh, ladder well, for the uh, Not the like view. I can see, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, dude? I think it's a whole lot better cooler than it was like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, Texas weather's a little crazy. It's been ridiculously hot for my frame. Yeah, sure. yeah, we came from like 62 degrees to 97 degrees. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, we wouldn't be working on a day like that. So for some reason you don't know Tim Mueller. Tim is a celebrity framer. Everybody in the nation who does anything with Carver knows Tim. Awesome Framers uh, is really what people probably call you when they don't know your actual name. Yeah, they say, hey, Mr. Awesome, I have a question for you. <laughs> So I'm curious from Mr. Awesome, since since you've already been nicknamed that. Yeah, it's ironic. Tell me about Ready Frame from your perspective. Have you seen this before? So I saw it at IBS and I watched your video a couple years back. Let's, let's slide back this way so you can kind of see. Yeah, and so basically I've just been following your stories. There's a, a couple building a house in Oregon that decided to do Ready Frame. Okay. So doing a little bit of a dive into it and watching your videos last week. I'm digging that the plates are all laid out. It's pretty awesome. I feel it? like it's almost idiot proof. I could still mess it up, but you it's like- You still could. Yeah. It's real close though. I like it. What, what they messaged me is they have like a pile of scrap like this on their main yeah. floor. Yeah. That's it. Crazy. Yeah. The other big thing that uh, Bill, my frame carpenter said, that his guys really are blown away by, like we're, we're not taking our tape out all day long, right? I mean, we pull this plate out and you can see it's ink jetted on here. So they know exactly what to do. This is a two by four. 8.8 eight and 10 sixteenths. So this is a pre-cut stud. And they know, hey, pre-cut stud, grab it from the pile. And the rest of the package, Tim, like you see over here, is pre-cut as well. So sills and jack studs and cripples, everything's in the bundle for that particular wall. So, so it just makes everything really straightforward and easy. So that guy's plates laid out and then whatever's needed for the window or door? Exactly, so yeah. that's wall uh, 213. Okay. So yeah, that's probably I really, these front walls here that haven't been framed yet. I like that idea. I, I feel like as I've gotten older, I take way more time layout than I probably need to take because mm -hmm. I just get kind of sick of making mistakes. So if layout's done and we can just frame. Yeah. I think the big thing on this job too is time is money. So we are on day seven of framing on your visit here today. So we started a week ago Monday. We worked an extra Saturday in between. And I mean, look how far we are. Yeah. We're rolling trusses on the garage. The back truss is already up on the house and we're stocked for the main roof trusses. So we've just come really, really far. Well, we pulled in today, the neighbor drove up. What are you trying to set a speed record? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was an interesting comment from the neighbor about the speed record. Yeah, it's nice to have a smaller footprint for the neighborhood. For sure. You know, where we're making noise, cutting stuff all day long. If yeah. they're framing walls without using saws a whole lot, that's got to even be nice as far as l less noise for the neighbors. Yeah, that's right. Now we did get a meter finally today. We've been running off generator power for a while. My city uh, electrical, for various reasons, didn't plug me in as soon as they normally would have. So having that generator off now makes yeah. a really big oh, difference. Man. All we're hearing is the generator and the nail gun at this point, yeah. which is pretty nice. Um, I'm curious from your perspective, Tim, you know, we, we tried to do this house on a bit of a lower budget than I normally do on my custom homes. 
uh, you know, things like two by four exterior walls instead of two by six walls, roof trusses instead of uh, hand cut rafters. Mm -hmm. On the other hand though, I've got some things that I felt like, look, this is something that I don't want to vary, including what's at your feet right here. This is inch and one eighth Advantec X Factor, which is a more expensive yeah. product. It's a heavier product. What do you think about what I've done here in terms of cutting back where I should and could, but in other places spending the money? It's always subjective, right? Yeah. For me, I'm the framer. I don't want to pack that. <laughs> so I would have taken that money <laughs> and put it in something else, right? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you're going to have like a, a very stiff floor system. And, and I, I noticed downstairs, like even a, just a piece of it right there. See, I can pick this up. This is like a three quarter, four by eight, right? <laughs> yeah. Equivalent weight. I noticed just how much glue they put between the joists and the You know what though, that honestly was not their fault. I gave them a long gun well, that had a really a wonky, it had a really wonky tip. Yeah. And it kind of, it kind of I was wondering how that worked out, but what I like seeing is the dark purple. Yeah. So you know the glue's doing its oh, job. Oh, there's plenty of glue. Yeah. And there's a lot, well, if you're, so if you're going to pay the money for the subfloor. That's right. Then do a really good job gluing right. it, a really Absolutely. good job fastening it. So Absolutely. I think, um, you know, everything kind of comes off the floor, right? So yeah. why not make it, if that's, if that's where you're going to spend a little bit more money, it's worth it. For me, that stiff, strong floor really makes a difference. And we're in the south here because we're all pretty much slab on grade. All my mechanicals are running through trusses. I'll have ducks running everywhere through those trusses. So if I tell the truss engineer, look, I'm looking for this stiffness, L over 360, then I might as well put the best subfloor on yeah. top of it that I can. I'd be curious to see what the stiffness, because our engineer will send us the frequency. I think there's some papers from some of the manufacturers mm -hmm. on vibration, what level is comfortable, yep. when do people notice. Yep. Doing the floor trusses two foot on center with this, no matter what the truss was designed, L over 360, does it feel like it's all over 480 right, by the time right. you glue and nail this stuff down? I suspect it is. Yeah. I mean, these floors feel really, really stout. <laughs> They're really stout. They feel yeah. really good. Which is a good thing. Like my house was the very first time we used iJoyce back in 2001. Yep. And I can feel it. And and the, uh, I don't know why we have a hutch with all of like Nikki's grandma's china that we're never going to use. Every time you walk by, you just hear it rattling. Yeah, it moves. It's clinking. Yeah. yeah. That's not a good. Not a good That's not feeling. a good. Yeah. Not a good feeling. So I'm curious, uh, and we haven't talked about this ahead of time, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. Oh. I typically see you framing your walls on the deck and sheathing them on the deck. And my crew really likes to stand the walls up. You guys, you can see there's a lot of bracing yeah. on this job. We brace the heck out of it, yeah. we plumb the walls, and then we sheath. What do you think about that? So I've been thinking about that because Online, people want to argue about which is the best. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's such a thing as which is the best. It depends it's preference. On, yeah, and situation. So if there's two of us framing, I want to sheet the wall and raise it. Yep. But if I had four or five guys, I want to get walls framed and then have somebody. We want to do things in parallel yeah. instead of one after the other, That's right? right? That's right. Uh, I think this is a benefit that I see for me. You know, that's an eight-foot sheet, and we're sticking up about, I don't know, four or five feet which means I've got that sheet going down three feet and connecting my lower and my upper walls with shear. I really like that. Yeah. There's not that break uh, at the plate line. Uh, I just feel like it makes a stronger house, but again, it is preference then. Yeah, and like we don't need that seismically where we're at, it's plate to plate. Right. But if you bridge the rim, you can eliminate a lot of strapping on the outside because you get the uplift too. Right. So it's like just a little bit of forward thinking yeah. could save labor later. On the other hand though, I don't see you having to use pump jacks a lot in your jobs because you don't, you're not needing to be outside and do that. Yeah, yeah, we've, I mean, my mindset from the time I was a kid, everything's already hard. And dad convinced us to buy a forklift back in 2001. It was this old like 1978 Badger Dynamics it would never start. We had to start it with ether, no brakes, but it taught us the value of having hydraulics. Yeah, And huge. so forklift is like... Now, I, I would have used one here in full honesty. We use them a ton in our jobs. We just didn't have the room. Yeah, I was wondering I've about that. I've got a five-foot setback on both sides, uh, and I had very little laydown space on this lot. So, so it, it's it's a case-by-case, case, right? I would have totally A forklift it. is best, yes. but we can't always do it. Yeah. So yeah. you just do I mean, the best Can you imagine can. how hard it was to hand get those <laughs> bad boys up? Yeah. My, my crew is a strong and smart crew, and sometimes muscle power is, uh, is how we need to do it, and that's how we did it for sometimes these Sometimes you just have to get it done. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I did have a midnight thought, though, that I, I wonder if I would have saved time on a crane on this job. You know, this might be a candidate for one of those rotator forklifts, mm -hmm. where yeah. it, the footprint's so small, but it can reach everything. Like a magna lift? Yeah. Oh, man, a magna lift would have been awesome on this job, yes. 
Yeah, because you, your driveway is full of materials. Yeah. So you. I could have just stocked it in one place and rotated yeah. that cab. Even around. a boom truck. It might have been. Some of those magna lifts that I've seen Kyle Stumpenhorst use have like 50 feet plus of reach, don't they? Yeah. The one we were looking at was like a 70 foot stick. Dang, that'd be and awesome. And you would control the whole thing remotely. Oh my god. And as long as you leave the sensors on, you can't tip it. Yep. So it yep. will tell you if you can't go that far. Yeah, that's right. You, It'll just, stop you plan itself. the whole job around around that location and the stick length. That's so crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Let's go downstairs, Tim. I want to ask you a couple questions about my zip install. We'll see you down there. All right, Tim, we're using a zip system R sheathing on this job. And I know you've been using zip for quite a while. 2009. 2009, so yeah. quite a while. So this, if you're not familiar, for the viewers who haven't seen it before, this is a 7 16 panel. It's oriented strand board. And then this green facer is the WRB, the weather resistive barrier on the outside. And this one happens to be the insulated version, zip R. So we've got an inch of insulation. It's an R6. And the insulation is basically sandwiched between the studs and the panel on the outside here. And then we're nailing through that with a very specific pattern to get our shear value because now I got this foam yep. that's in between. It's not quite as good for shear. I'm curious, first off, let's back up a quick second. What do you think is zip? You've been using it since 2009. Are you worried about this? You know, we're worried, we're trying to make sure that tape doesn't leak. Uh, you know, we're trying to not overdrive our right. nails too much. I was super worried at first. Then I did all the research, watched the videos, and now we've used it since 09, right? Yeah. The tape doesn't want to come off until we want it to come off. And even yep. then it's a hassle. Not worried about the tape. We have, we've got pieces stuck to the forklift that have been outside now for years. <laughs> and they're just they're just burned on there yeah. now at this yeah. point. Yeah, I was a little bit worried about what about if we overdrive nails? Yeah. Like you can see a little bit of wood Slightly on that. Slightly right overdriven. There. Jake's test was the best trying to pull water through, right? Yeah. And he couldn't do it. We saw some tests like that when we first started using so it. So Jake Bruton, I'm gonna back up just a second in case people don't know. Jake Bruton, a friend from Build Show Network put a hose on this on this overdriven fastener, a more overdriven fastener, yeah. and then put a blower door on the back side of this zip to try and suck the air yeah. through. Couldn't do Couldn't it. Couldn't do it. And I mean, it ran for like an hour. Yeah. And so once we cover this with cladding, I'm just not concerned about that at all. Yep. Um, since we've had shear inspections for 20 years, we're seismic zone D2. We just have had it hammered into our head, pun intended, don't overdrive. <laughs> that's where we get our shear rating. Yeah, So. That set us up for good, right? We just don't overdrive. Yeah. Slightly overdriven's okay. So that's like perfect right there. Yeah. Where it's basically flush. This one's maybe slightly too far in. Just breaks the skin. That is okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I would tell you though that if you've got some overdriven nails, just put another one in next to it, yep. right? And then you've got the shear value. And if you're lower on the building, I like to do something over that, maybe some tape or some liquid flash. This field, you know, at, at eye level will never leak. Yeah. even if it is overdriven. So this this is not a concern. I am curious what you think about Zip R, the yeah. insulated version compared to standard Zip, because standard Zip, you're nailing it right onto the studs. Yeah. You get that beautiful wood to wood connection. This has that foam in there. So we're using 716 Zip for, since 09. Yep. Structural one panel applied right to the studs. Our engineer tells us the edge spacing, field nailing. But now we've offset the panel by one inch, in this case, the R6. Yep. And he was very hesitant. He wanted to get in touch with Huber engineers. And I was like, I can make it happen. Yeah. But then he, he did the deep dive in the literature. So because it's a thicker panel, we have to use a longer nail. That's right. This is a three inch nail. We're using so three okay. inch. Inch and a half embedment. Yep. And then we just tighten up the nailing pattern. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're typically six on the edge, 12 in the field. He has us go three on the edge. Got it. So it's just more nails to right. make up for, I think he was calling it slippage. You know, you just imagine that that nail is cantilevered off. Mm -hmm. Anything that, that extends past the face can, is more easy to bend, right? Right. So then we just put more nails in so that each nail sees a little bit less load. Right, that makes sense. So for us installing Zip R6, there's nothing we need to do different except use a longer nail, yep. add some more backing at the corners. Yep. That's it. So one thing I like about the six in particular, they make this Zip System R in a three, which is a half inch foam, one inch total panel size, a six, which is our inch and a half here. They make it a nine and a 12. When you get up to that nine and 12, you got a pretty big nail. Like, do you normally shoot a three and a half or a four inch nail? We're usually using three inch nails for framing and then sheathing with R6, but we have a couple nailers that will shoot up to five inch. Because now if I need to put backing for my soffits on top of this, All right, I still point. want to hit framing. That's right. And so we have like, they're monster nails. Yeah. Because we want to yeah. hit solid backing. Good point. So when we're putting 
uh, something on here like we've got a detail where we've got a lag, a two by four on here. We're using a structural screw tip. Yeah. I'm going to a Simpson screw to lag it through back in rather than nail it. But I like the full round head on yeah. this three inch nail gun too. I feel like that full round head is a great choice. And that's required for our shear values, right? Mm -hmm. We can't use the clipped headed. We see yeah. it all the time. That's right, you can't use the clipped headed. We gotta use the full round head. Yeah. And, and for us, we have to use a 131 diameter nail which is a little thicker than what a lot of people use. Mm -hmm. And that also takes a little more pressure, so you're less likely to overdrive. That's right, so. great point. The last thing I wanna mention, Tim, uh, we framed the exterior walls in two by four, and then I've got that inch and a half panel, and we did a double bottom plate detail. I don't know if you saw that, but yeah. I've got this two by six bottom plate, which captures the bottom of my thumb, so it's not sticking out below. I wouldn't want ants or termites getting into that foam, so this captures it. I can tape over this joint, but then also this total thickness of wall is a standard thickness of five and a half inches. Nice. Which I like. Yeah, so you kind of hit that sweet spot of wall thickness, save a little bit of money, but yep. then let's not let's not skimp on the insulation so we exactly. add that back on. We want that good thermal bridge in there. Wood structural panel, foam insulation right over the top. Yep. One trip around the building. It's pretty nice. Yeah. And the last thing I'll mention that it really takes zip over the top for me and, and is a big reason why we use it, not on every job, but on a lot of jobs, is that really good air sealing that comes with taping all these joints. When we tape these joints, we're taping them for water first, mm -hmm. but with that comes a really good air seal, which means I can get a much lower blower door score and it simplifies the details. Plus I can see everything on the outside and know that it's yeah. done correctly. And it looks like your installers gapped it just yep. like they're supposed to. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Nice job. You guys do a nice job. Tim, thank you so much for coming out to see me, brother. Anytime. Just maybe next time, turn the temperature down a little. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find Bill Wood. Bill, day seven. Dang, dude. It's coming along. It's coming along really well. Yeah. So we don't do a lot of truss roofs. Uh, I've been a little bit snobby on truss roofs, to be totally honest. I like a hand cut rafter. You've done some amazing hand cuts on my jobs in the past, including my own house. We're not all the way done yet, but give me the difference if you can just ballpark it on labor savings on these trusses. I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't I didn't get them prepped ahead of time here. <laughs> well, trusses go faster. Yeah. There's a lot of front end work. Yep. We don't always, with the stuff that we build, we don't always get to use them. Um, you know, they're heavy to, uh, you know, if you look at those up on the second floor. Those are a bear to get yeah, up there. I mean, it's a rope, yep. two ropes. Yep. And, couple of guys pulling them up there um yeah they're faster i like them yeah. you know uh I when they don't work that's when things they are don't work <laughs> right, good point um but not easy to modify but a roof most of the time they do and and you know like when you're you're trying to do something special with uh an mm -hmm. overhang yeah, or no right. overhang yep. uh you know they've got their challenges yeah but you know they've got their place I think the savings in the order of magnitude is in the thousands, not the hundreds. I would agree. And it could be as much as, you know, five to 10 K on a project like this, which is not insignificant. Yeah. And that's both for labor and for materials when it's all said and done. Uh, and uh, my buddy, Brian Euler has said to me, you know, if that makes a difference to the customer's lives, then it's something we should do it in the house. If it doesn't make a difference in their life, we should move on. And that's, that's a little bit of a good guiding principle for this house that we're trying to do high performance on a budget. And so ultimately these trusses are not my preference necessarily as a builder. They don't feel quite as awesome. Um, but you know what? The clients are gonna live in this house. It'll be healthy. It'll be in, very well insulated. Yeah. It'll be air sealed. It's not gonna have any, uh, I mean, we're gonna be solid, right? You don't oh, have yeah. any concerns that, with they are not structural gonna, agility. No, here. not at all. And especially these trusses, these are extremely well-built trusses yeah, we have two some, by six top yeah, and bottom cords. we've got some attic uh spaces yeah we'll that show we you wanted, that later we wanted to incorporate into these now they're not you know they won't know one one different yeah you know? that's right yeah bill amazing job man keep Thank it up you. yeah we've got a few more days to go stay tuned Yeah, baby, day nine, check it out. I'm so happy. We in nine days have done more work than we typically would do, I would say in three weeks. This is killing it, guys. So first off today, we are almost complete on the roof system. I do have a couple more trusses that are gonna form the front porch and that's these right here. Uh, I love how BFS has staged the materials because as you can see, my job site is real tight. 
And once I got my foam delivery from Atlas, holy cow, I do not have a lot of real estate. So the timing on deliveries has, uh, I'd like to say that was pre-planned perfectly, but there's a little bit of luck in there as well. So these trusses right here are gonna form this kind of front porch area. And then I also got three bundles of my 5 8 brown zip. If you're not familiar, you see the green zip, that's basically half inch, I think it's 7 16 This is a little thicker. This is the 5 8 performance category right here. And so we're gonna put this on all the roof sections is getting that thicker version. That's something my engineer specified, so you wanna talk to your engineer about sizing on all that, but man, I absolutely love seeing the house in this stage. Another thing I wanna point out is you're starting to see the monopoly framing. That means that the overhangs are not formed at this stage on the job site. We do have overhangs, you know how I love overhangs. This kind of looks like a uh, Norwegian farmhouse at this point without those overhangs, which is certainly possible, but I like the forgiveness that an overhang gives us. So stay tuned, we got some things to go. We got an over roof detail, I've got rooftop insulation, there's some cool stuff happening. Once you walk with me though, because let's actually look at the garage trusses now that they're set. There's a couple of cool details in here that the folks at Builders First Source helped me out on, and these have executed really nicely. So as we walk into the garage, we still have all our bracing in place. We'll be able to get rid of that pretty soon. We're almost sheathed, but check this out. There's my attic access right there. And remember, we're in Texas, slab on grade. I have no basements for storage, so garages end up being the main storage space for Texans. This garage is quite a bit deeper. You can see we're, we're almost double depth. I could see somebody having a nice uh, older sports car being worked on in the front of the garage and still pulling their two daily drivers in here. But attic storage, huge for us. So this will get a Fakro ladder. The ladder will come down this way. And then I've got a nice platform to jump onto to put boxes as I'm storing. And these are storage trusses. So we'll go up there later once we grab a ladder and show you how much space is up there. But that's gonna get fully decked a pop up top in that attic space. And I've got a mini split head in this garage. We're gonna do a carrier two ton mini split. And I've got a detail to share air between the house and the garage because the roof will be insulated at the roof line. The walls will get insulated pretty much like the house. You can see I've got zip bar on these walls. And so that means that my attic is conditioned space above my garage, even though, again, we're separated between the house and the garage. And I can't stress enough how happy I am with the way the crew did the sheathing. This sheathing on the house went up prior to the trusses going on. So now I've got a continuous air barrier between the house and the garage. My inspectors like that too, because that's also a continuous fire barrier. But what I like about that is that's gonna keep air from the house mixing with air from the garage. Things that are in our garage, we want to stay in that garage. We don't want to mix that in the house. And you know, if, if I could design the ideal healthy environment for a house, I'd actually do somewhat of a detached garage where there's an airspace, a dog trot, something between the house. That's not available here, too tight of a lot. This is a more traditional two car garage attached. But having that zip system sheathing all the way up in the attic and by the way, taped where my rafters were touching the sheathing means that I've got a really, really good air bear. Maybe not perfect. We're going to have to do some details. I'm going to show you a few things later on in the series about how to air seal between house and the garage. But having that sheathing up means that anything that's coming through that air barrier, electrical wires, there's definitely going to be some plumbing pipes because my main water input is in the garage. So that means I'm going to run overhead to run uh, the main water line into the house. And then there's probably gonna be some low volt and uh, what am I missing? No HVAC connection whatsoever, so that's good. But each one of those things I'll be able to seal uh, from an air perspective between the house and the garage really well because that zip system sheathing's up. And that's zip R as well. So if, if I don't condition my garage, which you certainly don't have to, or let's say I keep my garage at 85 degrees, uh, but I want to keep my house at 70 or whatever, I'm going to be fully insulated between the house and the garage as well. And also that zip bar is running up because it's going to run continuous onto that gable. I've got bedroom and bathroom space on the other side of that. So that zip bar is continuous now between the house going all the way up to the gable. we got a lot to do. My Pella window package is getting delivered tomorrow, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, on day 10 of framing, which is crazy. 
And I think by day 11 or 12, we're gonna be installing the windows. And if I'm correct, I hope I will be, by about day 13, we're gonna be fully waterproof. This is really awesome. All right, guys, let's keep going on construction. All right, y'all, day 11. We lost a day to rain last week, but the guys made it up by working on Saturday. And check out this progress. This is crazy that we're literally at 11 days of framing. I've got my sheathing inspection this morning. My engineer's coming out. He's got to verify my nail spacing before we can tape over all the zip. But we basically have the entire house uh, sheathing complete at this point. We don't have any roof decking on, so we're working on that next. And some de one detail that I wanted to show you guys right here at the front garage that we're modifying a little bit. We originally set this up for Zip R like we've got on the rest of the job. But my engineer wanted me to um, get this all sheathed and show him my nail pattern. So we're waiting to do that till he comes. We're all set up there. We did switch though. I'm sorry, the thing I wanted to mention was we didn't put zip R here. We're using two layers of standard zip so it would be flushed out to our zip R like we originally intended. Uh, but he wanted the maximum shear value so we went with standard zip. And this is into the garage so it was no big deal not to have that extra exterior insulation. And then when you walk inside, oh man, some changes. This looks great. We're able to take a lot of the bracing down because now we're fully sheathed on the outside. And you can see the rain we got on Friday. We had like an inch of water in the back here that we had to kind of mop up. We were able to cut off one of our floor drains. This floor drain will be inside my HVAC closet, which is on this uh, kind of area separating the master um, I don't know, foyer, I guess, for lack of a better term, in this family room. And you can see the walls chalk lined on this lab here. So there'll be a doorway here, and this will get you into the closet. And that'll be an emergency drain for that space. And then what's cool now is you can see the trusses. Check this out. See that big void in the trusses? The BFS truss guys helped me out by thinking about, okay, when that closet's here and I've got an upflow, how am I going to get all those lines flowing out of this and through the trusses. So we pre-planned that. It's looking like that's gonna work out nicely. And we do have our roof sheathing on here. So now from the outside, you can really start to see that Monopoly framing, that really iconic, that wall coming right down to the roof line. And we'll be able to tape that joint on the outside. So we've got a perfectly air sealed house. So now we've got that Monopoly framing on the outside so that that wall sheathing is actually gonna touch that roof sheathing and we can tape off that detail for a really good air seal without having to rely on special things on the inside like spray foam. We should be fully watertight within the next day or so, and then we'll be ready to start installing our first window. So really, I think this is a good wrapping point for this framing two video. Framing's gone incredibly fast. I think that we're really on day 11, and I should really wrap up framing around day 12. Now one caveat, you'll notice that I don't have my interior walls in yet. We're gonna be doing that insulated subfloor detail and then those interior walls will get framed. So it's a little bit uh, maybe premature to say that we're done on day 12. That's not totally accurate, but I've also got an additional detail, stay tuned for in a future video where we're gonna be doing uh, four inches of Atlas insulation on the rooftop of this house. And then we've got an insulated over roof detail. So stay tuned for that video. With that being said, guys, Huge thanks to our friends at Builders First Source. This ready frame job has gone incredibly quick and everything has just clicked right into place. It's been a lot of fun. So with that being said, stay tuned for the next episode of the Reisinger Build.